Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by the epigenome and epigenetics. You should then be able to describe the role of epigenetics in disease. In the last video, we looked at histones and chromatin, and if you haven't watched that video, then you need to watch it now. Remember that in eukaryotes, DNA is wrapped around histone proteins to form chromatin. If the DNA is tightly wrapped around the histone proteins, then this is called heterochromatin. Because the DNA is tightly wrapped around the histones, RNA polymerase and transcription factors cannot access the genes. So transcription cannot take place in genes which are found in heterochromatin. Scientists say that these genes have been silenced. In contrast, where the DNA is loosely wrapped around histones, then we have euchromatin. In regions of euchromatin, RNA polymerase and transcription factors can access the genes. So in euchromatin, transcription can take place. Now a cell can change whether DNA forms heterochromatin or euchromatin, and by doing this, a cell can stop certain genes from being transcribed. Scientists call this silencing. Adding an acetyl group to histone proteins changes heterochromatin to euchromatin. This is called histone acetylation. Histone acetylation allows certain genes to be transcribed. However, removing acetyl groups from histones changes euchromatin to heterochromatin. Histone deacetylation allows certain genes to be silenced. In other words, these genes cannot be transcribed. Histone acetylation and deacetylation are carried out by enzymes, and by changing the levels of histone acetylation in different regions of a chromosome, cells can turn off or turn on different genes. Now another way that cells can turn genes off is by DNA methylation. I'm showing you here a gene and you can see that transcription is taking place, producing messenger RNA. In other words, this gene is active. Now upstream of genes, we find a region called the promoter. And in the promoter, there's often a large number of cytosines and guanines. Under certain conditions, a methyl group can be added to the cytosines in these regions. This process is called DNA methylation and DNA methylation inhibits transcription of the downstream gene. Firstly, DNA methylation prevents transcription factors from binding to the DNA. And secondly, DNA methylation triggers histone deacetylation. And remember that deacetylated histones form heterochromatin, in which transcription cannot take place. So both histone acetylation and DNA methylation can determine whether genes are transcribed or not transcribed. Scientists refer to histone acetylation and DNA methylation as tags. And the presence or absence of these tags across a person's DNA and histones is called the epigenome. So why is the epigenome important? Well, for a long time, scientists thought that a person's phenotype is determined by the base sequence of their DNA. However, we now know that the epigenome also plays a very important role in determining phenotype. Your epigenome is dynamic and changes during your life. For example, your diet and other factors such as stress can influence your epigenome. Now, this can play a role in disease. For example, we find higher levels of DNA methylation in certain cancers. Now, we'll be looking at cancer, including DNA methylation in later videos. A key role in cancer is played by tumour suppressor genes. Tumour suppressor genes encode proteins which reduce the chance of developing cancer. For example, the proteins encoded by tumour suppressor genes can be involved in repairing damaged DNA. Now, in certain cancers, tumour suppressor genes undergo methylation. This stops transcription of the tumour suppressor gene, allowing the cancer to develop. A good example is found in certain types of breast cancer. Now, if we could inhibit DNA methylation, then we could activate genes which have been silenced, and this could be a potential treatment for certain cancers. However, DNA methylation is so widespread that we could risk activating other genes, leading to harmful effects. So as we've seen, your environment can change your epigenome. However, epigenetic changes can also be passed from mother to offspring. A good example is seen in rats. Female rats groom their young by licking. Some females carry out extensive grooming of their offspring, whereas others carry out low levels of grooming. Offspring rats, which receive high levels of grooming, develop into adult rats that respond well to stress. 
and if the rats are female, then they go on to demonstrate proper grooming of their offspring. However, offspring rats that receive low levels of grooming respond poorly to stress and demonstrate low levels of grooming towards their offspring. Now it's thought that this behaviour is due to epigenetic changes. High levels of grooming alter the epigenome of the offspring, influencing their behaviour as adults. However, I should point out that this is not inheritance via sperm or egg cells. That's because epigenetic tags are removed during the development of gametes. Okay, so hopefully now you can describe epigenetics.